Research conducted by scientists frequently leads to situations where things could quickly spiral out of control. The Earth's magnetic field was cracked open days after the Large Hadron Collider was turned on, likely to result in a completely unexpected outcome. Magnetic monopoles don't always mean much to the ordinary individual, but scientists are intrigued by them because of the effect they could have on the universe. Come and join us as we learn what CERN scientists have just discovered after turning on the Large Hadron Collider. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more informative content like this. So, let's get started. To begin, let's travel back in time to the turn of the 19th century, when scientists knew a lot less about electricity and magnetism than they do today. It was generally accepted, for example, that electric charges came in two varieties, with light charges being repelled by, and opposite charges being attracted to one another, and that electric charges in motion created currents, or what we now call electricity. There were a number of major discoveries made in the 1800s that led us to our knowledge of the electromagnetic nature of our universe. This included induction, the process by which moving electric charges generates magnetic fields, and electromagnetic radiation, the invention that accelerating electric charges can emit light of varying wavelengths. All the magnetic properties we witness are the result of electric charges and currents, which are not evident in Maxwell's equations. However, from a mathematical or theoretical physics perspective, it is easy to modify Maxwell's equations to include the magnetic charges and currents. All that needs to be done is add the ability for objects to also possess a fundamental magnetic charge, an individual north or south. Moving magnetic charges produces electric fields, and a changing electric current could indeed induce a magnetic current, potentially cause magnetic charges to move and speed up within a magnetic current carrying material. However, for a long time, all of this was merely based on speculation and thought, until we began to recognize the roles that symmetries play in physics, and the quantum nature of our universe. The universe typically expands and cools, with the overall energy density closely connected to the rate of expansion at any given point in time. If you suddenly and unexpectedly give a large number of previously massless particles a non-zero mass, or add a large number of huge particles to the universe, the energy density rises exponentially, with more energy present, and the expansion rate into energy density is suddenly out of alignment. Because there is simply too much stuff in the universe, the expansion rate falls, and in the case of a monopoly production, it falls all the way to zero. Contracting in short order, the universe collapses, resulting in the big crunch. This is known as overclosing the universe, and it does not accurately describe our reality because we are still here and nothing has recollapsed. This conundrum is also known as the monopole problem and it is one of the three primary drivers of cosmic inflation. After inflation ends, the temperature rises above the grand unification scale. How have scientists been on the lookout for magnetic monopoles? In 1981, experimental scientist Blas Clabrera constructed a cryogenic experiment that used a coil of wire particularly designed to search for magnetic monopoles. Cabrera explained that by constructing a coil with eight loops, he would see a specific signal if a magnetic monopole ever passed through the coil. There appeared to be a lot of interest in the project after Cabrera came back the next day and saw that the experiments had generated a single signal, nearly identical to what a magnetic monopole should produce. Did this indicate that the inflation was wrong and that we actually lived in a universe with magnetic monopoles? Or did it mean that inflation was accurate and the one monopole that should have persisted in our universe happened to pass through? A bug or prank was another thing that we cannot really explain, but was simply untrue. There were a number of copycat experiments that followed, a lot which used larger REM for longer periods of time and contained more loops in their coils but no one ever saw anything closely resembling a magnetic monopole. But the search for monopoles has been enthusiastically taken up by CERN and its scientists. The Large Hadron Collider, the LHC, the biggest or most powerful particle accelerator there is, is located at CERN. The Large Hadron Collider is mainly composed of a 27 kilometer, 17 mile circle of superconductors in a number of accelerators that shoot high energy particles through the device like a bullet through a pistol. Every time protons collide, a complicated dispenser of particles is generated. Most of these particles have a lifespan that is less than a second, but they leave a trace of subatomic breadcrumbs that scientists could indeed follow. 
The collider is situated 328 feet, 100 meters, below ground and shoots a light source of protons in one area, while another beam travels in the reverse direction at max velocity. Some of these detectors include ATLAS, the 148 foot, 45 meter long, 82.5 foot tall machine played a role in the discovery of the Higgs particle. Half the size of the Notre Dame Cathedral, in Paris, not in the city of the universe, and twice as heavy as the Eiffel Tower, in Paris, not in Las Vegas, is Atlas. The Atlas is incorporated by some researchers into their own detectors. Alice CMS, LHCB, LHCF, to look into speculative issues like dark matter, other dimensions, and unifying forces in the cosmos. Only two detectors, Atlas and CMS, set out specifically to identify the Higgs boson. The LHCR's one-of-a-kind experiments are managed by an international group of researchers. Smashing particles together at almost the speed of light is one thing, but making sense of the data from those collisions is something else different. Particles, while the LHC's collisions, nearly 600 million per second, emit a wealth of information on the nature of matter and the forces that hold it together. The ATLAS detectors simply can't keep up. ATLAS, along with other detectors, can only record a smidgen of data equivalent to about 27 CDs per minute during reconstruction. Scientists tested their theories about how particles behave by comparing computer simulated collisions with real world collisions, and any discrepancies could signal new science. Every day, the data center processes one petabyte of data. Despite the fact that the monopoles have not yet been identified, physicists have divided conditions that increase the likelihood that they will be produced. Physicists' ability to draw conclusions from previous experiments at LHC and anywhere else has been restricted, but the latest experiment has allowed them to fine-tune the expected features of monopoles dictating the direction of future tests. Due to the fact that lead nuclei hold hundreds of neutrons and protons, they can just collide at a different wavelength than only one proton collision. New experiments that use a different production mechanism have allowed us to definitively rule out the existence of some of these types of monopoles, and also have provided us a much better, clearer idea of whether search for monopoles can go on next in 2018. The theory is based on a mechanism for producing electrons and their antimatter equivalent, positrons, the electrical equivalent of monopods. If two lead nuclei clip or pass very close to each other, the resulting interaction can produce something spectacular. The strongest magnetic field in the universe. A million times stronger than those found in neutron stars. In the heliosphere's low and medium latitude areas, the solar magnetic field and solar winds combine to generate large-scale plasma structures known as CIR. Coronal mass injections, CME, comparable to CIR's solar flares and other coronal mass injections, CMEs, are the consequence of the twisting and realignment of the sun's magnetic field, and can carry shock waves and compressed magnetic fields that can create severe space weather. Strong localized magnetic fields are generated by magnetic reconnection, which can cause CMEs to erupt from the sun's surface in active places. Even while solar flares and CMEs don't always happen at the same time, the two things are quite often linked since CMEs tend to happen near sunspot groupings. Large coronal mass injections CMEs, can fill nearly a quarter of the distance between the Sun and the Earth by the time they reach our planet. This is because the CMEs grow in size as they travel away from the Sun after being released, very much like solar flares. CMEs are quite frequent during the solar maximum, a duration in the Sun's 11-year process of action when the star is at its most active. In 1989, a CME triggered a 12-hour power outage throughout the entire Canadian province of Quebec, costing the province's utility operator, Hydro-Quebec, at least $10 million in repairs. Electrical current surges caused by CMEs can overload power grids, resulting in widespread blackouts. Furthermore, CMEs can jolt the Earth's magnetic field, disrupting radio broadcasts and generating radio static in the ionosphere. Because GPS relies on radio signals to relay information between a satellite and a ground receiver, it is especially susceptible to ionosphere disturbances, 
during a CME event, GPS coordinates have been known to stray by tens of feet as the radio signal passes through the ionosphere layer, which contains charged plasma that bends the path of the GPS signal in the same way that lenses bend light. When a CME causes a geometric storm, Satellites in Earth's orbit, especially those in high geosynchronous orbits, where the majority of communication satellites are located, can go into safe mode to prevent electronic damage from being caused by being struck by a high current discharge into the satellite or by high energy particles penetrating the satellite. The magnetic field shields us from solar storms. But last year, SpaceX saw firsthand how devastating space weather can be when a geometric storm destroyed up to 40 Starling satellites, valued more than $50 million in February. A magnetic shield absorbs the brunt of space storms, but some energy escapes. Magnetic shields are draughty, like a house with a window left open during a storm. Like a house, a magnetic shield deflects the majority of the storm, but the couch inside the house is destroyed. The sun's natural wind is powerful enough to blow away the Earth's magnetic field, increasing the chances of seeing the aurora. Mars was once like Earth, but lost its magnetic field billions of years ago, leaving its atmosphere unprotected. When atmospheric pressure dropped low enough, the atmosphere was ripped away into space and the planet's water evaporated and was carried away by the solar wind. The Earth's magnetic field serves as a navigational aid for many species, including turtles, crabs, bees, salmon, and mosquitoes. Magnetoreceptors in their bodies allow them to use magnetic fields to navigate and help them locate land during the winter. Female sea turtles use their innate compasses to return to similar beaches year after year. The Earth's magnetic field is essential for the navigation of many species, including sea turtles, birds, honeybees, and others. If it were to disappear, sea turtles could become lost during their annual migration, and other species may become disorientated or lost while traveling. Let us know your thoughts on the magnetic field and whether or not you think these creatures will go extinct in the future. Let's hear what you think of the Earth's magnetic field in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Click to see our other video.